Well, looky here. I climb myself out of that rabbit hole and fix the issue with row targeting. You know the one, where the prompt shows up for missing enemies. I even made the right modifications for the second party member. Ah, recovery is nice. I'm sure no more rabbit holes will open up to swallow me whole. Oh look, it's the quad targeting system. But I already took care of that. Alright, before we get to that issue, I had to move the minigame into the battle system. Make the right modifications, modifications plural. And I had the quad minigame up and running with no issues. Clap, clap, Cheering, clap, clap, whistling, whistling, clap, 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 which I was successful at doing! So the quad minigame is working. But you know what that means. We gotta test it. We gotta break his arm. Troop death! We're going to kill different sets of enemies to see if we run into any crashes. Functional build. Functional build. Functional build. Yes! Now I'm fine to move on. I'm fine to move on. There is nothing else to... Nah! Look, if I want to move the AoE leftwards, and there are no more enemies over to the left, then it'll jump all the way to the right like it's supposed to. But if I want to move the AoE all the way to the right, then it'll move it so that there are, you know, at two enemies, even though there are no more enemies left over to the, the thing, which it's not supposed to do. How it's supposed to work is that if there are no more enemies on one side of it, then moving to that side jumps it all the way to the other side. But instead, the right half of the boundary is just left to dangle. I'm just gonna touch this up a bit. It shouldn't take too long. Oh my god, you have no idea. You have no idea. All because the targeting origin is oriented to the bottom left. So all the little exceptions I had to note and implement and check against and j j JavaScript is telling me, Oh, that fucker doesn't exist. Shut up! From the last two enemies being dead to the first two to the middle four to the needle prick tip of my pube. Oh, 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 this better work. This better work or mommy's in trouble when she gets home. Hold, hold on, hold on. Just to be sure. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, so, through testing this out, I did eventually get it, so that if the last two enemies were dead, then it would simply push the cursor back to the first index. But then, when I tested formations like this, I ran into errors. So I edited my code so that it would work with these types of formations. But in doing so, it stopped working properly for formations like this. Now I'm left scrambling over my code. Bro, bro, bro. Time to take a chill pill, okay? Alright, fine. My boy here is having a bit of a breakdown. Succumbed to another rabbit hole. But that's no reason why he should be stuck in the pit of YouTube irrelevancy. But, my fellow YouTube enjoyer, you can help him. Just two clicks, a subscribble, and a belibble. Maybe slap your hand on the keyboard to leave a comment. You can use your head if you want, but we don't recommend it. Keep that forehead in tip-top shape, okay? See you on the flippity flop. Okay, you work. Now let's see. Now what the fuck happened? By fixing one thing, I break another thing. Code is not a problem you solve, it's a Rubik's Cube. I'm not a savant! Damn it, I'm panicking again. Falling into a pit of despair. That's a type of hole too. You know what happened last time I fell into a pit of despair? Someone shit myself. Wait. Epiphany. Come on, come on, man. Epiphany. 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 Come on, come on. The bit's gone on too long. Epiphany. Come on. Epiphany. All right, let's scrap this current quad targeting system. I'm going to level with you. I understand it's a trope in turn-based RPGs to have discrete cursors for each enemy targeted by an AoE. Well, let's not kid ourselves. Limited AoEs with discrete cursors can get the job done, but is it really giving you a sense of its boundaries? The limits of its scope? Sometimes, yes. In this case, not really. Is restricting the movement of the cursor if there isn't an entity or object adjacent to it really that intuitive? How much less intuitive and how much more frustrating is it when the cursor selects multiple objects? How do you get specific about what you want to select? You can't. I think, I think it's time to just use one big boy to select these small boys. The only guidance I'm going to use for this is to have it start on the leftmost living enemy. If you select an area that has no enemies, you get an err. Uh, let's get to big boying these small boys. Now hold on, didn't you say you were just building a functional build? What I have right now isn't functional, it's error prone. But isn't that only after you started tweaking it? And didn't you just get out of a rabbit hole about performant code? One that I had to dig you out of? 
You might be wondering, is this an elegant solution? And my response would be, sorry, I was busy jelking. What were you saying? I think it is. Before, when you were looking at the target selection for the quad area, sometimes it was simple to tell what the range was. But if there are enemies missing, then the visual language is a little... Understanding what you were reading kind of felt like solving a puzzle from The Witness. Don't get me wrong, those puzzles are pretty enjoyable, but... I mean, I mean, I mean you're just trying to select targets in my game, that's not... I'm not... I'm not John Blau. Alright, let's take this out for a test drive. Funny! Funny, game! It works! It's simple, it's uncomplicated. For some reason, the cursor always starts in the middle, but I think it actually works better than if it started on the left. You can even compare code. This is how long and unreadable the code was before. And here's how simple and clean and short it is now. Look, if you fill the AOE with a bunch of dead enemies, it'll give you the uh, But that's not all I have to do. I still have to- Hey, who mowing? I have to implement this for the second party member. They can't use the skill yet. Oh goodness, oh gracious, what misery lies in wait for me trying to get this all to work. Bro. No way, bro. That's what's up, bro. But still, I have to make an auto-targeting thing for the second party member, just in case the first party member steals their kill. If the player is targeting the leftmost area, but the first party member kills that area, then by default they will target the rightmost area, and vice versa. But what if the second party member targets the middle area and all the enemies there were wiped out? I figure that if I'm going to follow the golden rule of auto-targeting, I may as well set it to the earliest enemy in the array. So, I set it to target the leftmost enemies, run the check again to see if the leftmost enemies are alive, and if they are, then the target is set. If they aren't, then the target area is redirected all the way to the right. That's it! It is finally done! That's all the basic minigames. The rest are simply modifications to this. But don't worry, either I or the game itself will find a way to make my life hell. See you next time.